Hello my friends! Today we're going to do the last part of our color along of the planet Earth in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. We'll make the last details. We'll add clouds on planet Earth, Posca on the flowers and a starry sky to create a space effect. Let's start right away with the cloud cover. I'm going to use gouache, a simple unbranded one that I bought in an art supply store. And I'm going to take the finest brush I have. It comes from this set here that I bought at Action Shop for less than one euro. Are you ready? Let's go! Like the other times, I add a cover to protect my hand from the pastel which is here around and which is not yet fixed. I place it on it and I just attach it with a clip. I take a little gouache in my paint bucket and I just apply it with small jerky movements and a slightly circular shape. Why did I choose gouache? Because it has a fairly transparent effect and therefore when you reach the end of the paint with, which is on your brush, you continue to apply it even if we hardly see it because the clouds are transparent on the earth. To learn how to paint these clouds, it's not a personal improvisation. I watched a video by Cindy Barillet. I'm going to give you the link in the info box. On this video, she translates into French an acrylic painting by the artist Ryan O'Rourke, who paints planet Earth with acrylic in only 10 minutes. This video is super interesting. It's very nice to see and I recommend it to you. I was inspired by the cloud part to know how to apply my paint with the brush. By cons, I will not put as many clouds as him, because otherwise we won't see the shape of our continents at all. Our first layer of gouache is pretty transparent, that's what we wanted. It's always possible afterwards, if you want, to add layers of gouache paint or acrylic paint to have a more opaque effect on some areas of your clouds, to give them an even more realistic look. I use the gouache to hide the stars that are drawn on planet Earth, since as the planet is in the foreground, we can't really have stars on it.
I waited a few minutes until it's dry. Once it's dry, I go back to certain areas to add a little bit more dense white inside some clouds. Using the end of the paint on your brush allows areas where the clouds are fraying. And there we go, I think it's good, I think it doesn't need more, maybe just strengthen a little bit here. I wet my brush a little so that it will be even more transparent. We're going to bring a little rain on the Sahel. Yes, that's a good idea. It's okay for me, that's what I needed. I'm going to rinse my gear and then we'll attack the edges of the flowers and leaves with Posca. So I take my white Posca size 1M and I just erase the black lines of the flowers which end with white. I zoom it a little bit so that you can see better. I do not go all around the flower, I only cover the area where I put white and at the end. If you follow my color along, share with me your finished picture. On Instagram, you can identify me in the photo to be sure that I will see your picture as long as your account is not private. And you can also use the hashtag BarbaraColor in one word with O-U-R at the end. On Facebook, you can send me your coloring by private message and I'm going to post it on my Facebook page in the album Creation of Subscribers. It's always a pleasure for me to see the coloring pages that you have accomplished by following my tutorials.
From time to time, use your Posca on a white sheet to check that the paint is still very right. Because if you have Prismacolor pigments on your lead, your paint will no longer be white. It will carry the Prismacolor pigments on your page. You can also add details inside the flowers. When you use the Posca above the Prismacolor, there is no problem to try. If it doesn't suit you, it's very easy to remove, especially the fine lines like here. Here, I find I was a little too far, so you take your nail and you scratch it slightly. You can also do it with the pencil that you use to make the center. On this flower, I'm not at all convinced. So simply, you see, I scratch a little and that removes the line of Posca. These small white lines are easy to do and it slightly erases the black lines of the drawing. That gives a more realistic appearance without making too much effort. I colored these flowers imagining that it was a healing blanket that spanned the world. And that's why it's important to me that it stands out well, that it's full of freshness. And that's why I use Posca on the edges. If your Posca is not white enough, if it's a little transparent, it's simply that you have not shaken it enough. You don't have to shake it two or three times, no, you have to shake it really well, like 50 times. As you can see, I don't surround the whole flower. I stop adding Posca where my color darkens. Otherwise, it gives a more artificial effect. Again, it's a matter of taste. If you prefer to go all around the flower and that's what you like best, of course, do it like that. Me, I prefer to stick as much as possible to a natural look. Here I use white, despite the deco yellow on the edge of the flower. It's because the deco yellow is a very pale yellow. And if I use my yellow gel pen, it's a much white yellow and it will remove the delicacy of the light yellow that I applied at the edge. 
so I prefer to accentuate this flower with white. So much for the white Posca. I will now use the Uniball Signo Gel Pen. It's the yellow one. These are pastel colors from the brand Uniball Signo. I'll add the link in the info box. There are not a lot of colors, but they are really pretty. Of course, if you have a yellow Posca, that's fine too. So here I do the same with the leaves, which are green yellow, like chartreuse yellow at the edges. I erase the black lines with my yellow gel pen. It will give them a really bright appearance and it will make them stand out very well on your page.
for these leaves, I take the light green Posca, which is much better than the yellow one because I haven't used yellow at all on these leaves. Mm, it would be nice if I found a Posca for this color. I'm looking a little bit to remove the last black lines. I think this one will do the trick. It's the Inibol Signo. They call it red. I don't see it red at all. Well, I'm a little, little colorblind, you know. <laughs> so maybe you see it red. Well, tell me. But me, I see it really rather like a pink. So I think this one will be okay to remove the black lines on this leaf. Qu'est-ce que t'en penses C'est rouge ou c'est rose Bah déjà ma couleur ah. à l'intérieur c'est hyper rose. Oui. Et montre-moi sur la feuille. La tête. Bah c'est rose. Ah, on est d'accord. C'est hyper rose. Here, my son thinks also that it's pink. Well, he may also be a little colorblind since he's my son. So tell me if you see this pink or red. Oui, je vais te laisser mon cœur. Oui, je peux le dire. My son is near me right now. I'm filming my tutorial and next to me, he's using acrylic paint and he's painting a whole picture with trees, a moon, birds. Here, I think it's done. Just the edge of the earth here, I'm going to do it in white. You'll see why afterwards. But I have a little idea in my mind, as you can imagine. Now we are going to let everything dry and then we're going to make some small finishes on the edge of the earth before adding the last touch, that is to say the stars and I won't forget of course our little butterfly. So the little touch up that I'm going to do now is that I'm going to add a bit of luminosity on the edge of my planet earth with the white pencil, which I blur, you see, along the Posca. The line of white Posca marks the demarcation and I press the pencil quite well along the Posca and then I blur it outwards. I only do this in places where I don't have the width of flowers. It will make our planet Earth a little bit brighter. If you want to accentuate it further, 
you apply a little Posca, which you blend with your finger. It's even whiter and brighter. When you add the white pencil first, it helps your Posca to spread well, because it puts a little oily film on your page, while the wanting tense makes the paper a bit rough. So it's more difficult to blend your Posca if you only have the layer of the wet ink tents on your page. That's it. I'm going to add a little bit here. I think it's missing. Here we are going to take care of this little butterfly, nothing very complicated. I make the center of its wing with permanent red and I blend it with sunburst yellow. And for his body I'm going to use chocolate. Deco yellow for the halo around him. And a little bit of true green on the edge for the transition to the blue. And I blend all this with cream by overflowing a little bit on the blue. And we end with a little bit of white. And here we are! So we have a second satellite to our planet Earth, which is made up of this little butterfly. Now we come to the port, the one I kept for the end on purpose. The one that will really bring the final touch to our coloring. It's adding the stars. So for that, we need a little bit of acrylic paint and an old toothbrush. At home we use electric toothbrushes, but you can take a normal one. You take back the cache you made when you cut the circle to protect your page. And I also made one for the moon. I prefer there is no stars on it. If there is some stars on the butterfly, it doesn't matter. The butterfly is more distant and, in addition, as it was colored with Prismacolor, it will be very easy to erase the acrylic on it if it doesn't suit us. I slightly wet my toothbrush in water. I sponge the excess water on a paper towel and I put a little bit of paint on it and I spray it on the page. Like that. Protecting the left page is an idea I could have had before I started. <laughs> I agree. The advantage of this technique is that your stars will be on the page in a random way. There are other techniques to do that, for example with a brush, 
you can see this technique with the brush in the video of Cindy Barillet. You add as much as you want. It shows better on my sheet than on the screen, so I can guarantee you that there are more stars on my page than what you see on the screen. A concern that happens when we do this is to have a big trace of paint. I just pick it up with paper and then I blend it with my finger or with a small wet paper towel. Here, neither seen nor known. Then just add a few stars over it so that it no longer appears. Here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the result. I wait a few minutes for it to dry and then I'll come and tweak it with a few little stars with Posca. During this time I'm going to rinse my equipment and my fingers. And now with my white Posca I just add a few stars where there are not enough. Here, the chance made it like a Milky Way. Well, I'm going to pursue it. From time to time, I can make a star like that. I make a point and I let go the Posca in the four directions. We can do that here too. Don't add too much stars with the Posca, because inevitably when you add it yourself, they don't really get placed randomly. We can't help but look for a structure in what we do. Our points are almost all the same size, so I just add at some places where there are too few. And this is the result. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see better the starry sky. Thank you so much, my dear friends, for following this color along with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to tell me in the comments if you want other color along like this. As I told you on part 1, this page is a buddy coloring with my friend from Australia, Olivier Odoran. I give you the link to her YouTube channel in the info box. Look at the wonderful version she made of this page. Don't hesitate to watch her videos and tell her that you come from me it will certainly make her very happy. I can't wait to discover your coloring works that you will have done following this tutorial. And I will see you very soon in other videos. Happy colorings!